is now called to order. Jean, if you would please call the roll. Call. Calling the roll, Mr. Schron? Here. Ms. Conwell? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Hairston? Here. Ms. Simon? Here. Mr. Brady? Mr. Brady is absent today. Mr. Greenspan? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Germana? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. And Vice President Jones? Here. You have a quorum. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Vice President, I would ask to uh, excuse our president for, for the meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Our council president is excused. Our moment of silence this evening will be in memory of uh, Congressman Lewis Stoke, who has recently passed uh, at the age of 90 after battling brain and lung cancer. He served in World War II and then attended Cleveland Marshall Law School. He completed 15 terms in the United States House of Representatives, representing the east side of Cleveland. He was the first black congressman elected in the state of Ohio. Cold War era chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. He headed the Congressional Black Caucus. He was the first black congressman on the House Appropriations Committee. And he was a resident, he was raised in my own county district, but also my neighborhood of the, in the Althwaite public housing estates. So a young man who, who, who grew up to do great things. So let's, let's take a moment of silence to reflect on his life. Is there any public comments related to the agenda? No one has signed in to speak. Okay. We have a motion to approve our minutes as printed on the agenda. Moved by Councilman. I moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Any announcements from our county executive? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Uh, as most of you know, Executive Butish is out this week and will be returning next week on Tuesday the 1st. Uh, he was, um, he had become friends with Congressman Stokes and I'm sure he would have appreciated uh, your choosing that as the moment of meditation. This past week, Executive Butish and Councilman Schron took part in the announcement of uh, the Keystone Company's plan to modernize and expand the former Hugo Boss facility in Brooklyn. Kaga County is proud to have played a critical role in retaining the more than 160 jobs through loan development uh, programs there. Additionally, we are working uh, diligently on the 2016-2017 budget. Uh, this past week, the executive and staff met with uh, outside agencies uh, as well as uh, our internal agencies to discuss what the priorities would be and to share with those agencies the need to be creative and to find savings in this next budget. Lastly, uh, many of you have already met uh, Eliza Wing. She's our new Chief of Communications. Uh, she started last week and has tried to get around to meet with all of you on council as well as many of the folks here on staff. Uh, if she's not seen you yet, I'm sure she will see you very shortly. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And we have no announcements from the council president today. So legislation introduced by council, consideration of resolutions of council for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2015-0123, supporting the Cleveland 2030 district and its efforts to significantly reduce the energy consumption of new and existing buildings in the downtown building district and throughout greater Cleveland, supporting the Better Buildings Challenge and its voluntary leadership initiative that asks local leaders to make a public commitment to energy efficiency. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in fa uh, is there any discussion? Just quickly, um, Mr. Um, president, acting president, this was heard in committee. This resolution is more than just a piece of paper saying it's a resolution. This actually gives Cuyahoga County an opportunity to get training 
for um, the directors of sustainability in Energy Star and be able to measure our energy usage and efficiency standards throughout our county buildings to help us see where we stand with relation to the um, other buildings and we, how we can improve. It costs us nothing. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2015-0124, determining the services and programs that shall be provided and funded from the Veterans Services Fund in 2015, authorizing payments to various providers in the total amount of $39,006.19 for said services and programs for the period ending December 31, 2016. Motion to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. All, uh, any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Mr. President. If I may, um, this council a few years ago adopted the uh, Veteran Services um, Fund or created le legislation that created Veteran Services Fund. These are funds that are returned from the Veteran Service Commission every year. I'm proud to say that we have taken the lead and we're the only county in the state, we're the only state in the nation that has a Veteran Service C Commission, let alone the only county in this state that has a Veteran Service Fund dedicated to repurposing those monies returned from the Veteran Service Commission back to veterans for veterans issues. All other counties dedicate the money back to their general funds. Uh, this year, the, the amount is less, obviously, than previous years for two reasons. Number one, we have a more active Veteran Service Commission, which is reaching out to veterans more effectively. And number two, because property valuations have been reduced and property tax collections are down, uh, which is the primary source for funding for the Veteran Service Commission, those two items have reduced the amount that we have to appropriate from over 700000 to 39000 this year. The recipients this year, as my colleagues will recall, 20% uh, of the money must be dedicated to scholarships, 10% uh, to Tri-C, and 10% to Cleveland State for veterans that reside in Cuyahoga County. The remaining money this year will go towards a veteran treat treatment docket for the Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas, uh, and I would urge my colleagues for the support of this resolution. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Please add my name. Any further discussion? If not, we have a motion to adopt. Aye, so move. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Legislation introduced by executive. Consideration of resolutions for first reading adoption under suspension of rules. Ms. Jones, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any discussion? Resolution number 2015-0162, a resolution extending the appointment of Interim Director of the Department of Communications, Mary Louise Madigan. Moved to adopt. Second. Moved by Miller, seconded by Councilwoman Conwell. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I just have it. Resolution number 2015-0163, amending the 2014-2015 biennial operating budget for 2015 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations, for appropriation transfers, and for cash transfers. Motion to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Mr. President, thank you. Um, as my colleagues are aware, every by, week, by a weekly fiscal agenda, we submit questions to the administration. Council Member Miller and I had uh, a certain question regarding the self-insurance fund and the administration and council is requesting that item be held. Uh, we have a substitute resolution. Uh, and in addition to that item being held, there's a finance committee meeting scheduled for Monday at 1 p.m. to discuss this item uh, in more detail. So with that said, I'd like to propose a substitute to resolution 2015-0163, which is at each of your stations. Moved to substitute. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Can you read the next item? Um, um, Mr. <laughs> Vice President, you'll need then a voice vote to adopt the resolution on its merits as substituted if there's no further discussion. Move. Moved second. By, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All right. Clerk, if you read the next item. 
Resolution number 2015-0164, confirming the county executive's appointment of Mary Louise Madigan upon her taking the oath of office as director of the Department of Communications. Move to adopt. Mr. Vice President, this, these are uh, just being referred to committee. That one, I believe, is being referred to the Committee of the Whole. Oh, it's being referred to committee? I have lost my place. Got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just did this one, Committee of the Whole, and now this one starting to refer those. And you're right here. Mm-hmm. This one's already done. Now we'll, I'll read this one into the record. All right, go right. Okay. All right. Resolution number 2015-0165, authorizing a contract with HH Golden Gate in the amount not to exceed $998,543.52 for lease of office space in Golden Gate Shopping Center for the period October 1, 2015 through September 30, 2020. We are going to refer this resolution to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0166, fixing the 2016 water, storm, and sanitary sewer maintenance and or sewerage treatment rates for County Sewer District numbers 1, 1A, 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, 13, 14, 18, 20, 21, 22, and 24. Referred to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0167, Approving and confirming the 2016 water, storm, and sanitary sewer maintenance and or sewerage treatment assessments for County Sewer District Numbers 1, 1A, 2, 3, 5, 8, 9, 13, 14, 18, 20, 21, 22, and 24. And both of these resolutions are in accordance with Ohio Revised Code, Section 6117.02. We will refer, refer this item to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0168, making an award on requisition number 33011 to DeJoy Suburban Excavating in the amount not to exceed $4,408,034.60 for sanitary water and roadway improvements to Barton Road, Bronson Road, and Cook Road in the city of North Olmsted and Olmsted Township. Referred to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0169, making an award on requisition number 34173 to Shermer Construction in the amount not to exceed $923,730.50 for replacement of Columbus Road Bridge number 01.09 over Bear Creek in the city of Bedford. Referred to Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0170, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1200-346 with Applewood Centers Incorporated for Staff Secure Shelter Program and Placement Planning Day Report Services for the period June 1, 2012 through June 30, 2015 to extend the time period to June 30, 2016 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $705,360. We'll refer this item to Public Safety and Justice Affairs. Committee reports and considerations of resolutions for second reading. Resolution number 2015-0152, amending resolution number 2014-0102, which authorized the county executive to accept on behalf of the county the donation of burial plots within Crown Hill Cemetery from William Suhey, Jr. for the purpose of accommodating indigent burials by changing the number of plots from four to eight and the approximate value from $4,000 to $8,000. Any discussion? No discussion? Second reading. Two second reading. Okay. And then this item will be referred to our uh, September 8th meeting for third reading adoption. And Jean, if you please read the next item. Resolution number 2015-0153, authorizing the county executive to accept on behalf of the county the donation of two burial plots within Whitehaven Memorial Park from Society of St. Vincent de Paul, valued at approximately $2,000 for the purpose of accommodating indigent burials. 
Again, if there's no discussion, this item again will be referred to our September 8th meeting. Resolution number 2015-0158, authorizing the Director of Public Works to execute and submit various supplemental loan applications to the Water Pollution Control Loan Fund of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, one is in the amount of $189,035.09 for construction of the North Granger Sewer Replacement located in the City of Garfield Heights, County Sewer District Number 9. And the second is in the amount of $38,447.50 for construction of a drill drop structure in connection with the Broadview Drill Drop Project located in the City of Parma, County Sewer District Number 1A. Discussion? Mr. Chairman, this was heard in committee, and uh, this is for approval of sending uh, requests for the loan. Okay. So that'll be on third reading. Our September 8th meeting. Resolution number 2015-0159, authorizing the Director of Public Works to execute and submit a loan application in the amount of $1,340,000 to the Water Pollution Control Loan Fund of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for construction of a gravity sanitary sewer in connection with the Broad Rock Drill Drop Project located in the City of Parma, County Sewer District Number 1A. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, uh, this is... Uh also a loan application and uh, this uh, drill drop uh, project will save money instead of having to go through a full sewer uh, rebuilding there so uh, this will be heard for approval on September 8th committee reports in consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of rules Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any discussion? Gene, if you please read, read the next item. Resolution number 2000. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Ayes have it. Again, Gene, if you would please read the next item. Resolution number 2015-0139, adopting the 2015 Economic Development Plan in accordance with Section 7.05 of the Cuyahoga County Charter and Section 801.01 of the Cuyahoga County Code. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Just discussion. Uh, aye, we could, discussion. If we could have. Um, what, um, what came before our, our committee on the economic development was... Uh, a, a, a first draft of the plan, and uh, it had a lot of merit to it. Uh, and I think that uh, what was done subsequent to, to our initial reading was uh, we had uh, Mr. Kelly and his staff uh, listen to some suggestions, some ideas, some some thoughts we thought uh, that would uh, actually bring some improvement uh, to it and bring some some identifiable uh, goals and objectives that uh, were were brought forward. Mr. Miller, uh, Councilman Miller also uh, came and participated. So uh, what was uh, a good plan became, we think, even better, and uh, it's going to have the tools in place uh, to go forward with some new ideas. You're going to, uh, I know that we're going to be talking about uh, uh, one of those uh, microloan uh, programs uh, also later uh, this evening, and I think that uh, this is a way in which we, we identified items that uh, came out of that first draft from the first uh, few years of putting it together, uh, and we added new, uh, new programs and new benefits, we think, uh, that will be job creators here in Northeast Ohio. So I would encourage my, my colleagues to support this and uh, as we go forward and, and tweak it as we uh, get better and better with it. Thank you. Mr. President, my colleagues, the Executive Chairman Jack Schwann, the Economic Development Commission and Council work collaboratively to produce the Year 5 Economic Development Plan. The draft plan acknowledges the county's earlier economic development work, especially the Western Reserve Plan, and then takes our economic development work in a new direction based on Executive Armin Butish's priorities. The plan calls for integrating and coordinating the efforts of a much larger number of organizations inside and outside of county government so that economic development, workforce development, education, human services, and other systems are all working together to strengthen our economy. 
The plan moves toward focus on the quality of jobs created or retained and how closely they relate to our core economic strengths rather than merely the number of jobs. The plan sets forth the executive's innovation initiatives to spur entrepreneurship, business startups, early stage growth, and new technology applications. Building on the County Planning Commission's work over the last two years, the new plan includes a new column or vertical for placemaking initiatives among our list of economic development tools, setting the table for creating more unique and special places in our county's neighborhoods. I commend Executive Butish for his vision of what economic development in Cuyahoga County can look like and support the year five plan. All right, any other discussion? Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. <clears throat> read, our, read our next item. Resolution number 2015-0156, making an award on requisition number 34890 to a supplier to be determined in the amount not to exceed $12,800,000 for electric power services for various county facilities for the period September 1, 2015 through May 1, 2018. We have a motion to adopt. Motion so moved. Adopt. Moved Second. and seconded. Uh, can we have uh, any discussion, Councilman? Mr. Chair, uh, this was heard in committee. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but basically what's happened is we have Palmer, uh, a company that advises in power contracts, and they uh, do this all over the state of Ohio. We, uh, they went out for requests for proposals and they were able to narrow down the, uh, the bidding to two, uh, two uh, companies, Champion Energy Services, LLC, and AEP Energy Incorporated. The uh, end of the contract is, uh, you know, coming up, so we're, we're kind of winding down. Um, what, what's happening is the opening of their bid is tomorrow. So what we're approving is that whoever is the lowest, lowest bidder at the uh, bid opening tomorrow, the executive will approve and we're giving the approval in advance. We were assured by uh, Palmer Energy that uh, Basically, with the preliminary indications, uh, we're going to be saving a substantial amount of money over First Energy. Um, my particular question was, how much generally can we expect the fluctuation being from day to day? And I was given the answer that uh, it, they do not expect the deviation to be more than six-tenths of one percent. So even even if it was six tenths of one percent higher than what uh, we're anticipating, we're still going to be saving money over the existing contract. Uh, so that's about as much as I can say, and I believe we have representatives in in the uh, audience to answer any questions. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2015-0157, authorizing a revenue generating utility agreement with City of Maple Heights for maintenance and repair of storm sewers, sanitary sewers, and water lines located in County Sewer District Number 9. Moved to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, uh, City of Maple Heights uh, wanted to change the uh, the amount in their contract with the sanitary engineer as to uh, they, they wanted to have uh, more uh, of the money that they assess uh, the homeowners uh, to go towards uh, 
I, I, I think it was water, waste, not wastewater, but uh, uh, sewer, storm, storm water. And uh, so what all this is is realigning the amount uh, that the assessments are going to go. And then the reason we're doing this on uh, second reading suspension is the fact that we're going to be approving the whole uh, series of different cities uh, agreements with sanitary and GIR at, at a coming meeting. So this is getting this all in a line. Okay. So we, we move for uh, everybody to approve this. Gene, please add my name to the resolution. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2015-0160, authorizing an agreement with Red Center Logic for participation in the Cuyahoga County Benefits Regionalization Program for the period May 1, 2015 through December 31, 2017. To approve. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Councilman. Uh, the committee asked for passage of this benefit agreement, which covers a small number of employees for the Red Center Logic. $6,000 was saved this year for them, but the main reason their organization joined is for the rate stabilization. Uh, move for approval unless there's uh, any further questions, and Director is here to answer any additional. All right, if there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2015-0161, authorizing an agreement with the Metro Health System in the amount not to exceed $607,747.96 for health care and management services for youth residing at the County Detention Center for the period July 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015. Move to adopt. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Jones is self-explanatory in the caption of the uh, resolution. Uh, we also await uh, notice from the pharmacy board that Metro was so kind to petition regarding <coughs> pharmaceutical uh, for the, our regular jail and our juvenile detention center. Uh, recommendation from committee is to uh, adopt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Consideration of resolutions for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2015-0142, authorizing amendments to agreements and contracts with various providers for Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act youth training for the period July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2015, to extend the time period to June 30, 2016, to change the scope of services effective July 1, 2015, and for additional funds with the providers and in the amounts as printed on the agenda. To adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, we heard this in committee, and we actually were, were told that the um, purpose of these amendments was to address the changes coming from the Workforce Investment Board. It has changed the eligibility of the ages of the, the, the youth who will be trained. They've changed that category, so this was a way to address that at the ages are from 14 to 21 eligible and at risk youth who have barriers to employment and this is all federally funded so we recommend passage Councilman? Sorry. Sorry, I, I apologize I, I, I'm going to be recusing myself on this vote so or potential conflict all, right. all in favor I'll say aye. aye aye opposed ayes have it Gene if you read our next item Resolution number 2015-0148, making an award on requisition number 34095 to Lane Inliner in the amount not to exceed $2,891,570 for the 2015 Sewer Rehabilitation Program in various county sewer districts for the period August 1, 2015 through July 31, 2017. Moved to adopt. Second. Moved and, second, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, this was heard in committee. Uh, this uh, lane inliner is a supplier of uh, e different products that are used by the sanitary engineer, and uh, so they, they bid on it, and as necessary, we'll be able to purchase from them. So we recommend approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 
Resolution number 2015-0151, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1300-019 with Economic and Community Development Institute Incorporated for management of the Cuyahoga County Microenterprise Revolving Loan Fund for the period February 1, 2013 through January 31, 2015 to extend the time period to January 31, 2017 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $2 million. Any discussion? Move to adopt. Second. Second. Move and second it. Any discussion? Uh, I think that um, this is another way in which we can show that the, the concepts of these microloans uh, to stimulate the entrepreneurship uh, here in the county is, uh, is alive and well, and it's a, it's a way in which I believe that uh, we're going to see that spark of energy, and perhaps we'll, we'll find the next Microsoft or the next Dell or one of those kind of great projects will come out of uh, these small, uh, small entrepreneurial uh, enterprises. I encourage everyone to support this. And Gene, if you'd add my name to the resolution. All right, Mr. all in favor? President. Councilman? I would also like my name added. Thank you. Actually, as being uh, as chair of the committee, I would like mine <laughs> to be on the on this also. Okay, I have Jones, Miller, Conwell, and Tron. Is that correct, Germana? Mm -hmm. And I'll add ECDI is a, a a a very important part of of our county's effort for economic development. This organization has uh, its roots in in Columbus, and they identified a gap gap of roughly of millions. I'll say tens of millions, maybe forty million dollars and loans made well, within uh, the core areas of this uh, community. So they've come into the community, we have partnered with the county, and uh, they are, are playing a strong role in, in our efforts to help small business, small businesses in this county. So they definitely are worth, uh, worth supporting. All right, so again, are we all in favor say aye? Aye. aye. Opposed, ayes have it, all right. Ah, any miscellaneous committee reports? Mr. Chairman. Do you want to go first on committee report? Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, Monday, as I mentioned earlier, the 31st at 1 p.m., Finance and Budget will be meeting to hear the uh, self-insurance uh, fund issue that was pulled off the agenda today, as well as the uh, property reappraisal uh, program or protocol which is being instituted uh, during the triennial cycle. Mr. President, uh, my colleagues, the Council Operations and Intergovernmental Relations Committee will meet at our regular time on Tuesday, September 1st at 3 p.m. We will hear from our Columbus lobbyist, and Ed Krause will update us on the county's collaboration efforts, and our Inspector General, Mark Griffin, will present the Inspector General semi-annual report. Thank you. Health, Health and Human Services Committee uh, will not meet uh, next week. Mr. Chair, the uh, Public Works will be meeting um, at our regular time, 10 o'clock, Wednesday, September 2nd, for the five pieces of legislation. Thank you. Safety. Uh, Tuesday, 1 o'clock. Um, human Resources Appointment and Equity Health Presentation will be 10 a.m. Tuesday, 9-1. Good question. Uh, is this still going to be the health briefing on September 1st? Or, or? Yes. It is. Because okay, there was you. no, we do have some things that's remaining in committee, but no items were referred today, so we're trying to leave it just for the health presentation. Okay, and and I, I want all, the other members of council that are not familiar with that program because it's for especially for the new council. This this will be explaining how our self insurance program works and our own. Yes, uh, Councilwoman program. Brown's already on the committee. Anthony, we did extend uh, do extend that to you. If you know wherever you are, even if you can't make it, yeah, all right. Any further? So, 
I don't have a committee meeting. I just wanted to just update council that the sheriff department has dedicated one of the sheriffs to the environmental crime task force that was put together by the solid waste committee to address the illegal dumping in our communities, which is hitting um, Councilman um, Harrison's com community very hard in East Cleveland and surrounding. It's a huge problem. Most of us have seen um, what's happening. So we do have a dedicated sheriff to that task force um, right now, and we're really happy about that. Thank you, Sheriff, um, or Director. Thank you. Just to that point, Mr. Chairman, thank you to uh, Director Bolvin and Sheriff Pinckney, who I know have been working hard to find uh, manpower to serve in the unit, and they have looked uh, above and beyond, and they've been able to come up with one so far. And, uh, and I do hear that we have a few more uh, who are in line to join this task force. We appreciate you. E even with the temporary group that has been helping with the task force, have done some great work in helping dealing with the um, illegal dumping issues that we faced in East Cleveland. So thank you so much. All right, any miscellaneous business? Councilman? Uh, just one comment. I think that uh, for those of us who are part of the part of the original 11, and I know that you opened this with uh, recognition of uh, Congressman Stokes, but if you recall, he was the one who's, who stood there in front of the 11 of us, and uh, we all had a gulp in our mouth and our little butterflies in our stomach because he, when he used the words, you're about ready to venture forth on a historical journey that had never been done, and so uh, it's with a special spot in my heart that I, uh, I remember those days and uh, as we kicked off this new county form of government more than five years ago. So with that, uh, I, I appreciate you recognizing him in our uh, moment of silence. All right, any other miscellaneous business? Gene, has anyone signed in for public comment? Yes, Mr. Vice President. Mr. Peary? Good evening, Council President and Council Members. The topic of my comments is vote no on syntax in November. We need fair funding for the arts where we all pay. The $1.6 million campaign being waged by the proponents is being actively opposed with $5 signs which have been seen by thousands. The plain dealer reporter who never reported one word I said at the June 23rd meeting has stated three separate times, no organized opposition to the renewal has emerged. Well, Mr. President, my campaign is an army of one. So far with my demonstrations, I have walked the equivalent of nearly 500 miles. Now this may not be organized opposition, but sure as hell, it is excellent exercise and a lot of fun. The demonstrations have covered six districts, one, two, three, four, seven, and 11. On August 13, there was a discussion on the syntax organized by the South Euclid Democrats. Chris Ronan, president of University Circle, Inc., spoke on behalf of the proponents. Unfortunately, Mr. Ronan was over 30 minutes late and missed what I said. While I got photographs taken with Mr. Ronan, got a copy of the fancy glossy flyer, and listened to talking points of how the arts benefit our community, there was no discussion as to whether the syntax was fair about cigarette smokers supporting corporate welfare and fight for social justice. For example, the Cleveland Museum of Art with nearly $1 billion in assets, $1 billion in assets, received nearly $12 million from the cigarette smokers over a 10-year period. The Cleveland Orchestra, with over $250 million in assets, received over $15 million over the same period. The Cleveland Museum has donated $140,000 to the proponents' campaign. If the syntax passes, and I hope it does not, the museum will be making over 80 times their investment. Now we are told that unless the cigarette smokers continue with their bailouts, our world-renowned arts and culture assets will be at risk. Rubbish. Why can't our wealthy foundations support arts and culture? Why do we always have to squeeze the poor? 
I plan to demonstrate in every district against the Jimmy DeMora syntax and give Cuyahoga's corrupt establishment a run for their money. Vote no on syntax in November. I'm submitting a document for the record. Mr. President, the brewers are in town. Go tribe, and thank you for your attention. Has anyone else signed in for comment? Yes, Mr. Vice President. David Turner. Mr. President, members of council, I want to come out tonight and introduce myself. I am the new external affairs manager for the illuminating company, David Turner, and not been the county council yet, so I want to come out and introduce myself, meet all of you. Uh, I'll be working with your chief of staff to schedule time with each of you, a cup of coffee, just talk about our relationship. Thank you. Go try. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Gene, has anyone else signed in? No, sir. That's it. All right. Well, if nothing else holds our attention, our meeting is adjourned. Did he say first name? He did. <laughs>